Mr. Raekwon and Mrs. Shaquita, I know you love your son. We love little Antoine too. We love little Antoine too. And we've been trying to help Antoine for four weeks. We've been working with intensive research-based interventions. We've been using research-based interventions to get Antoine up to par. And, and we tried everything. Didn't we, Mrs. Slobbenberger? Mrs. Slobbenberger, am I lying? Mrs. Pettiguino, did, Mrs. Pettiguino, did we not try to help Antoine? Mrs. Pettiguino, I might be white. I might be white, but I don't see color. When I come to work, I'm working hard for every child in this school, the black ones and the white ones. Please, Mr. Raekwon, if you don't believe nothing else I say, I love your son, Antoine. And Mrs. Shaquita, I know how you feel. But listen to us. We've been teaching for 20 years. I have a master's degree from Harvard. I have a master's degree from Harvard. She's the New Jersey Teacher of the Year. But I need you to hear me. Your son. I don't know if he was a drug baby. I don't know if he was a crack baby. I don't know if he was premature. I don't know, Mr. Mr. Raekwon. I'm not trying to judge you because of your race. Your son, Raekwon is at the bottom of the third grade class. And I don't think he can catch up. I'm sorry. If we don't put him in special, if we don't get him a strong IEP, if we don't put him on an IEP right now, Mr. Raekwon, Ms. Shaquita, we may lose him to the streets. And y'all sitting there. They pull out that piece of paper. Will you please sign? for special education evaluation consent. And you silly ass girls, go and sign your kid life. I do this for our children and I do this for our single mothers out there doing the best they can to take care of these kids. Leave the single mamas alone. Some of them need a kick in the ass, yeah. Some of the single mamas need a kick in the ass. I would agree. Some of the single mamas need a kick in the ass, but most of the single mamas is doing a damn good job from what I can see. I said most of our black, beautiful black single mothers is doing a damn good job from what I can see. Leave the single mamas alone. Support the single mamas or leave them alone. If you ain't got nothing good to say, if you ain't got nothing good to say about a mother raising multiple kids with no father, if you ain't got nothing good to say about a woman raising multiple kids with no father, keep your beta male mouth shut. Help them or get the hell out the way. You black parents are hell bent on putting all of our children in special ed and on medication. The reason some of you do it has nothing to do with helping your child. It has everything to do with helping you avoid responsibility for your child. Let me say this again. A lot of you black parents out there are seeking out special education and medication not to help your child but because you don't want nothing to do with your child. I'm going to say this again. You know that putting your child in special ed means they're not going to be left back again, even if they can't read, write, or count. You know this. You know by signing them up for special ed, by injecting them into the school-to-prison pipeline, they will probably never be held back again although they will graduate as a functional illiterate. You know this, but you don't want to be bothered. You know what the school is trying to do to your child is not a good thing. Many of you parents know this. You know it, but guess what? You don't care because you're fed up. You're tired of the phone calls. You're tired of the meetings. You're tired of being told to come get your kid. You're tired. So what do you do? You throw your child to the special ed wolves or you throw your child to the medication wolves. That's what you do. So, you know, putting them in special ed is not going to help them. But because you don't care about your kid no more than the school does. 
You don't care about your child no more than the school does. So you go ahead and sign them up for special education or sign them up for psychiatric medication. Yes, we have black parents who make these mistakes out of ignorance. Yes, we have black parents who make these mistakes out of ignorance. But a lot of you don't make these mistakes out of ignorance. You make these mistakes intentionally because you want to absolve yourself of responsibility. That's right. You don't want to make them try harder with their reading. You don't want to make them try harder with their math. You don't want to teach them no discipline. You don't want to help them get their emotions under control at home. That's too much work and you don't have time for that. Black people don't have time for other black people, not even their own children. Black people don't have time for other black people, not even their own children. Black people don't have time for other black people, not even their own children. That's right. You don't have time for that. You don't have time to be fighting for your son at school. You don't have time to be fighting for your daughter at school. You don't have time for that. You got an after work party to go to. You got to get your hair done. You got to pick up your snow bunny from work. You got to get your new Tims, your new Jordans. You working on your first rap album at 45 years old. You got other things to do. You got to go coach. You got things to do that don't involve your child. So you go to the school and you say, school, you want them in special ed? No problem. Give me the paperwork. You want them in special ed? No problem. Give me the paperwork. You want my child in special education? No problem. Give me the paperwork. You want him on medication? No problem. Where you want me to take him to get his ADHD diagnosis? Where you want me to take him to get his ODD diagnosis? Where you want me to take him to get his CD diagnosis? Just tell me where you want me to go. Tell me, Massa. Massa? Massa? These your chilling, Massa. These your chilling, Massa. I gave birth to him, but these your chilling, Massa. This your big house, Massa. Just tell me, Massa, where you want me to take my child for the ADHD evaluation? ODD evaluation, conduct disorder. These your children, master. I know I gave birth, master, but we all belong to you. You was a good master. You always done right by me and my children. You always done right by me and my children. I was a special ed. My mama was a special ed. My daddy was a special ed. My granddaddy was a special ed. My great granddaddy was a special ed. My great 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 grandma was a special ed on a slave plantation, master. You always done right by the children. You always done right by the children. I'm sick and tired of black parents acting like they put their kids in special ed because they didn't know better. You know better because I taught you better. I'm tired of black parents acting like they put their kids in special ed because they didn't know any better. You know better because I taught you better. For 25 years, most of you have heard my message. So I'm getting sick and tired of y'all talking about I didn't know what to do. You know exactly what special ed is. There's no black person who hasn't heard my message. You know exactly what special ed is. But you know what? You're too lazy to do right by your child. And you're too lazy to make your child do right by themselves. Problem identification. The first step of the special ed process is problem identification. Your child's teacher sends you a letter. We're dealing with stage one, problem identification. Your child's teacher sends you a letter or calls you up on the phone telling you your son or daughter isn't catching on as well as the other children or they're not keeping up as well as the other children. Stage number one, your son or daughter isn't catching up or they can't learn as quickly. I want you to understand something. When your child's teacher comes to you with a learning problem that they claim they cannot solve. When your child's teacher comes to you with a learning problem they claim they cannot solve. They've already given up on your child. 
They've already given up on your child. And I'm going to say this to every teacher watching me right now. I'm going to say this to every teacher watching me right now. Black, red, white, yellow, or brown. Let me say this to every teacher listening to me right now. I don't care if you black, red, yellow, brown, or white. If you are telling parents in September and October that their children can't learn as well or can't keep up as well as the other children, you are a lazy and horrible teacher. No teacher should be telling parents in September and October, your child needs help that I can't give them. That's too early in the school year. That's too early in the school year. That is too early in the school year. If you telling parents the first six weeks of school that your child needs extra help that I can't give them, you are not a good teacher. I don't give a damn who you are. I don't give a damn who you are. Public school, private school, charter school, Catholic school, homeschool, independent. If your child's teacher has given up on your child in September, has given up on your child in October, they are a horrible teacher. No parent should be hearing from no damn teacher that early unless it's a deaf issue, a blind issue, an autism issue, an orthopedic issue, a brain injury issue, an intellectual disability issue. It better be something serious for them to be coming to you in September and October. If it's nothing serious and they're coming to you with reading and math problems, September, October. That's a lazy ass teacher. That's a lazy ass teacher. That's a lazy ass teacher. Here's what I want black parents to understand. Whenever the teacher comes to you, beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of the year, they have given up. The minute the teacher says, I got to send your child to the child study team for interventions, they have given up. And let me tell you, because I've evaluated 25 years of children, a lot of our teachers are so lazy and unwilling to reach children where they are. Some of our teachers are so lazy and unwilling to reach ch t children where they are. If your kid can't move as fast as the other children, they're automatically going to say something's wrong with them, even when it's not. Your kid might be average. Your kid might be able to learn. But guess what? They're not moving as fast as the others. You're making my job hard. And since you're making my job hard, and I know I got a principal who don't give a damn, I'm going to refer you to the child study team. I need you parents to understand a lot of your children are being referred because the teacher doesn't want to diversify or modify instruction. I'm going to say it again. A lot of these teachers, black and brown and white and red and yellow, they're too lazy and arrogant, conceited, self-centered that they will not modify or diversify their instruction to meet your child where they are. So I got a message to teachers of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. If you can't modify or diversify, you can't work here. Goodbye. We reach the children where they are at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. And in the words of the great Pan-Africanist educator, Booker T. Washington, we pulled them up from their bootstraps. I said at the FDMG Academy, we will meet our second graders and our third graders and our fourth graders where they are. And if they are behind, we will pull them up by their bootstraps. That's the FDMG way. Leave no child behind. That's the FDMG way. Leave no child behind. That's the FDMG way. Leave no child behind. So now, 
problem identification. Once they tell you your child got a problem, they send them to the where? Child study team. Now, here's what I want black parents to know about the child study team. First of all, your child should not have even been referred to the child study team and would not have been referred to the child study team had the teacher cared enough to go the extra mile. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. If the teacher cared enough to go the extra mile, your child would have never been referred to the child study team. So let's look at the members of this so-called child study and intervention team. Let's look at the members of this so-called child study and intervention team. Let's look at the members, the teacher who gave up on your child. And here's what I want you to understand. Your child's teacher doesn't want anybody on the child study team to believe your child can be saved in their classroom. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Your child's teacher doesn't want anybody on that child study team to believe your child can be saved without special education or medication. Let me say it again. Ifa Tunde three times. Let me say it again. Ifa Tunde three times. Let me say it again. I need some, I'm Ogun. What's going on with my Ogun? That child study team, that teacher doesn't want anyone on the child study team to believe that your child can be saved. Did y'all hear me? The teacher is coming to the meeting to convince everybody that this kid cannot be helped. The child study team is a form of, it's entrapment. The child study team is entrapment. The child study team is entrapment. It's entrapment. They bring you there acting like they want to help your kid. Am I wrong? Black mothers, can I get some hearts if you identify with what I'm telling you? If you're a black mother listening to me right now and you saying, Dr. Umar, I thought everything you saying, but I couldn't prove it. If you're a black woman, it's a black mother right now or a black father, give me a fist, a black grandmother, black auntie, uncle, raising your nieces and nephews and brother and sister. Can you do, is this making sense to you? You come into a meeting and they say, we care about Jerome. We care about Andre. We care about Raekwon. We care about Shaquita. We care about Rashida and we just want them to reach their fullest potential. We love our children at this charter school. We love our children at this public school. We love our children at this Catholic school. We love our children at this independent school. And you're looking on the faces of everybody around the table. You're looking at the faces of everybody around the table. You're looking at the faces of everybody around the table and you're like, their mouth is saying one thing. Their face is saying another thing. Their mouth is saying one thing. Their faith is, their face is, you like, they telling me they care about my kid. Nobody here looks like they even want to be here. Nobody in this child study team even looks like they want to be here. The teacher is there. She's already given up on your kid. The teacher is there. She's already given up on your kid. The teacher is there. She's already given up on your child. And she come to the meeting to make everybody else give up on your child. So at the child study team, which is stage two, they're going to take care of stage three. Intervention design, intervention planning, Intervention implementation. Intervention design, intervention planning, intervention implementation. Can I ask you all a question? I assume everybody has a normal IQ. I assume everybody has a normal IQ. 
If I need to give you an intelligence test, let me know. If I need to give you an intelligence test, let me know. Before I get married, I'm giving my wives an IQ test. Before I get married, I'm sitting my fiancés down and they're getting an IQ test because I will not marry a dummy. I won't. If you can't pass a white man's intelligence test, you damn sure don't deserve to be jumping the broom with the King Kong of consciousness. If you can't pass a white man's IQ test at 35 and 45 years old, you damn sure don't belong to be queen of FDMG. But I digress. I digress. I digress. Now, here's the question I want to ask all my intelligent parents on the call tonight. Here's the question I want to ask all of my intelligent parents on the call tonight. If the teacher has already given up on your child, if the teacher has already said she can't help your child, this is the teacher. She said, I can't do nothing with them. What makes you think anybody else on the child study team is going to give your child any chance of succeeding? I'm going to ask the question again. See, we're going to break it down tonight. We're going to break it down. I'm not the greatest black school psychologist in history for nothing. I'm not the greatest black school psychologist in history for nothing. I'm not the greatest black school psychologist of all time for nothing. I'm going to ask you the question one more time. I'm going to ask you the question one more time. If the teacher who's a part of this so-called child study team has already conceded defeat in being able to teach your child, what makes you think anybody else on the team is going to believe your child can succeed. Do you see what's going on here? The child study team is a trap. It is a joke. It is a scam. It is a fraud. I don't care if your child is at a white school. I don't care if your child is at a black school. I don't care if your child is at a hood school, a charter school. It's a scam because nobody at that table, listen to me, I want you to tape this, tape this and share this, tape it, share it. Nobody around that table is trying to do any extra work to help your black child. I'm going to say it again. If you feeling me, brothers, I need some fists. If you feeling me, sisters, I need some hearts. If you feeling me, because I can go to sleep. If this ain't helping you, if this ain't helping you, I can go to sleep. Okay. OK, is you with me? Is you with me? Rest in peace to Malcolm X, al Haj Malik El Shabazz. Rest in peace to Minister Malcolm X, al Haj Malik El Shabazz. Rest in peace to Earl Little, Malcolm X's father who was UNIA chapter president, I believe in Lansing, Michigan, where I will be speaking on March the 18th. It was Malcolm X's father, Earl Little. It was Malcolm X's father, Earl Little. It was Malcolm X's father, Earl Little, who wrote to the president of the United States demanding the Honorable Marcus Garvey's release from Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. I said it was Ma Malcolm X's father, brothers and sisters. Malcolm X's father, Earl Little, was the Garveyite who wrote to the president of the United States demanding Marcus Garvey be released from Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. It was Malcolm's mother, Louise Little, rest in peace, who used to write for the woman section of Marcus Garvey's Negro world, Marcus Garvey. Malcolm X grew up as a child of the Garvey movement. Malcolm X would go back to the Garveyism of his parents after he left his organization, but he was assassinated today. 56 years ago, was it? He was assassinated today, 58 years ago. Rest in peace to Malcolm, Pan-Africanist Malcolm, the greatest Pan-Africanist in America since Garvey. El Hajj Malik El Shabazz assassinated February 21st, 
1965. We will never forget you. Peace and blessings to Queen Mother Betty Shabazz, who's an ancestor. Peace and blessings to the grandson, Malik Shabazz. I think one of the sisters might have transitioned. Peace and rest in peace to her. Shout out to Ilyasa Shabazz and all the remaining members of Malcolm's family. We stand with y'all on this day that your father and grandfather was murdered on the orders of the FBI in collaboration with New York City police and jealous, 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 hating ass Negroes in the black community. Let me get back to my message. Rest in peace to Malcolm X, February 21st, 1965. Let me get back to the message. Teachers are always complaining they don't have enough time. Teachers are always complaining they're underpaid, right? So if the teachers are overworked and underpaid, what makes you think anybody sitting around the child study intervention team table what makes you think anybody sitting around the child study team intervention table is going to try to help your child? Do y'all see where I'm going with this? It's like going into court. It's like going into court. It's like being charged with a crime, falsely charged with a crime, going into court and you think you're getting a fair hearing. You think you're getting a fair hearing. You think you're getting a fair hearing, but the judge and the prosecutor and the public pretender have already met before you showed up. I said the judge and the prosecutor and the public pretender have already had a conference before you showed up. I said the judge and the prosecutor and the public pretender already met and decided this was going to be a lynching. They do the same thing with the child study team meetings. They already talk about you and your child behind your back and then they put on a good face. So when you walk in the room, you feel like they care about your child. You walk in the room and you feel like they care about your child. You walk in the room and you feel like they care about your child, but they don't care about your child. They didn't already decided he needs special ed. They didn't already decided he needs Ritalin. They didn't already decided he's ADHD. They didn't already decided he got a math disability. That meeting is a scam and a farce. I'm telling you this because I know it to be true. You really think the same people who miseducate your child from eight o'clock to three o'clock? You really think the same people who miseducate your child from 8 a.m. until 3 a.m., 3 p.m.? You really think the same people who miseducate your child from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. are going to help them from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m.? You really believe that, don't you? You really believe these complaining-ass teachers are going to go the extra mile to help a child whose teacher wouldn't even go an extra mile to help them in the class. Let me say this one more time. You really think these child study teachers, these are teachers who got their own children in their own classroom, who didn't even want to be on a child study team. They were told they had to be, and they got a few extra dollars in a check to do it, Title I money. The principal is paying these child study team people Title I money, the same Title I money that should be paying for tutors, the same Title I money that should be paying for tutors is paying these teachers to sit after school or during school in these boring ass child study intervention team meetings. And you really think teacher number one got a class, teacher number two got a class, teacher number three got a class, social worker don't know how to teach. Counselor don't know how to teach. Dean of students don't know how to teach. Assistant principal could care less about teaching. And they're going to sit around and come up with interventions to help your black child when they all know that the teacher wants him out the classroom. They all know that the teacher wants him out the classroom. They all know that the teacher wants him out the classroom. So they do these interventions 
And they only going to do the interventions for maybe three weeks. They're not going to give it much time. Three weeks. On paper, they say they meet with your child every day on paper. In reality, they might see them one day. How are you going to know? How are you really going to know how much time they working with your child? You don't have no way of knowing. You don't have no way of knowing if the child study team is really working with your child. You don't have no way of knowing that. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to lie on paper. They're going to make up, falsify. Yes, they lie. Teachers lie. I work with them. Teachers lie. I work with them. Principals lie. I work with them. So get rid of that crap. Okay? Get rid of that crap. Okay? They're going to falsify the intervention log. They're going to falsify the intervention log. They're going to falsify the intervention log and make it look like your child was getting all this help when your child wasn't getting no help at all. And then after three weeks, they're going to call you in and say, Mrs. Shaquita, I know this is going to come as a disappointment. I'm sorry, Mr. Raekwon. Mr. Raekwon and Mrs. Shaquita, I know you love your son. We love little Antoine too. We love little Antoine too. And we've been trying to help Antoine for four weeks. We've been working with intensive research-based interventions. We've been using research-based interventions to get Antoine up the par. And, and we tried everything. Didn't we, Mrs. Slobbenberger? Mrs. Slobbenberger, am I lying? Mrs. Slobbenberger, am I lying? Mrs. Pettiguino, did, Mrs. Pettiguino, did we not try to help Antoine? Mrs. Pettiguino. Mrs. Sloffenberger, didn't we try? Mr. Raekwon, Mr. Raekwon, I know you told us at the meeting how much special ed harmed you. You've been to jail twice. I am so sorry, Mr. Raekwon. I'm sorry you had to go to jail. I'm sorry the school failed you. The system failed you. But I want you to know, Mr. Raekwon, I might be white. I might be white, but I don't see color. When I come to work, I'm working hard for every child in this school, the black ones and the white ones. Please, Mr. Raekwon, if you don't believe nothing else I say, I love your son, Antoine. And Mrs. Shaquita, I know how you feel. But listen to us. We've been teaching for 20 years. I have a master's degree from Harvard. I have a master's degree from Harvard. She's the New Jersey teacher of the year. She's the California teacher of the year. She's the Texas teacher. She's the Georgia teacher of the year. She's the Maryland. She's the D.C. She's the Michigan. No, no. She's the Minnesota teacher of the year. Yes. I know because we're white, you might not want to trust us. But I need you to hear me. Your son. I don't know if he was a drug baby. I don't know if he was a crack baby. I don't know if he was premature. I don't know, Mr. Mr. Raekwon. I'm not trying to judge you because of your race. But we've tried reading comprehension. We've tried reading fluency. Your son, Raekwon, is at the bottom of the third grade class. And I don't think he can catch up. I'm sorry. If we don't put him in special, if we don't get him a strong IEP, if we don't put him on an IEP right now, Mr. Raekwon, Ms. Shaquita, we may lose him to the streets. And y'all sitting there. They pull out that piece of paper. Will you please sign? Will you please sign the permission for special education evaluation consent. Will you please sign the permission for special education evaluation consent? Will you please sign consent so the evaluation team can evaluate your child and decide if he has a disability that requires special ed service? So the child study team 
has put these fake phony ass interventions in play, which they never did. The child study team put these fake phony interventions in play that they never did. The child study team put these fake phony interventions into play, which they never did. And now they want you to pass your kid off to the evaluation team. And then when you meet with the evaluation team, after you sign your son's life away, guess what you notice? Most of the evaluation team is the same people from the child study team. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me the same people who told me my kid can't learn and can't respond to interventions is also going to decide if he has a disability? Wait a minute. Isn't that double dipping? Isn't that double dipping? Isn't that some kind of... How can you be on this team and then be on this team? So, you sign the evaluation form and the psychologist who's probably white, the school psychologist who's probably white or Latino or Asian or Arab or East Indian, this racist psychologist who you never met, who you never met, who you never met, and you better start making it a point to meet the psychologist before they test your child. You better start making it a point to meet the psychologist before they test your child. And you better also make it a point to find out where exactly where my child be tested. Where exactly will my child be tested? Where exactly will my child be tested? Where exactly will my child be be tested. Come get your copy in Patterson Saturday. So the racist, you better find out where they're going to test your kid at. I've been forced to test kids in rooms without sufficient lighting. Yes. I've seen psychologists test kids in the hallway. Totally unethical. Where is your child going to be tested? In the hallway, in the broom closet, in the basement with Freddy Krueger? Can I see the space where my child is going to be tested? May I see the space where my child is going to be tested? May I see the space where my child is going to be tested? Can I meet the psychologist who's going to do the testing? And you know how you really get them? You ask them a question like this, Mr. Psychologist. Of the last 10 black boys, you evaluated for special ed. Mr. Psychologist, of the last 10 black boys, you evaluated for special ed. Mr. Psychologist, of the last 10 black boys, you evaluated for special education. How many did not qualify for special education? That's the most important question you can ask. Of the last 10 children, this broke ass intervention team and this broke ass evaluation team asked you to test last 10 black boys that you tested. How many of them did not qualify for special education? They gonna look at you like you speak in another language. They gonna look at you like you speaking in another language. They gonna look at you like you're speaking another language. You want to know why? Because every black boy they get qualifies for special education. Every black boy they get qualifies for special education. Every black boy they get qualifies for special education. And why does every black boy they get qualify for special education? Because the school want that money. The school want that money. What did Biggie Small say? What did the notorious B.I.G. say? Notorious B.I.G. said, more money, more problems. Notorious B.I.G. said, more money, 
Mo problems. Notorious B.I.G. said, Mo money, Mo problems. But the notorious R.B.G. is now saying in 2023, the notorious R.B.G. is now saying in 2020, the notorious R.B.G. is now saying, Mo problems, Mo money. Mo problems, mo money. See, Notorious B.I.G. said mo money, mo problems. Notorious R.B.G., mo problems, mo money. Special Ed is mo money. Mo problems, mo money. So your child has been set up and shafted. But you know what the problem is? I don't even get to test your kid. I don't even get to test your kid until you sign permission to evaluate. So I want every black mother and father, every Mr. Raekwon and Miss Shaquita who got a little Andre, every Mr. Raekwon and Miss Shaquita who got a little Andre, I need you to understand something. If you never signed that permission form, if you never signed that permission form, he never gets evaluated. No school can evaluate without signed consent. No school can evaluate without signed consent. No school can evaluate without signed consent. No signed consent. So they take Antoine into the office. They give him an IQ test, doesn't diagnose anything, only gives you scores. Reading tests, don't diagnose anything, only give you scores. Math tests, don't diagnose anything, only give you scores. Writing tests, don't diagnose anything, only give you scores. Comprehension tests, don't diagnose anything, only give you scores. Emotional screener, psychological screener, doesn't diagnose anything, only give you scores. And they're going to come back with a disability classification. Remember, we cannot call them diagnoses in school. In the school, disability classification. Hospital clinic diagnosis. Hospital clinic diagnosis. We can't use medical terminology in the school. So in the school, the special ed disability is a classification. Diagnosis versus classification. So they're going to come back with the classification. Reading disability. Math disability. When guess what? The reason he can't read, he's never been taught. The reason I Antoine can't read, Antoine never been taught. The reason Antoine can't read, Antoine never been taught. You want another question to ask the child study team? Let me give you another question. I want all my Mr. Raekwans to listen. I need all my Shaquitas to listen. Another good question. After you ask the psychologist how many of the last 10 black boys you tested did not qualify for special ed. The next question. If this school is on the state danger list, this school has been cited by the state for low achievement, low test scores. If this school is in corrective action, if this school has already been identified as a low achieving school, if this school has already been identified as a low achieving school, can you please help me understand how my son is the problem and not you? I'm going to say it again. This is for the alpha males, because if you're not an alpha male, you can't do this. If you're not an alpha male, you can't do this. If you're not an alpha male, you can't walk in there 10 toes down and say time out with this shit. Your school 
has been cited by the, the school district in the state for low achievement, low test scores, high dropout, teacher turnover, suspensions, expulsions, violence, everything. Uncertified teachers, everything. So how are you going to convince me that my son is the reason he can't read when you might be the reason he can't read. I need one of you snow bunnies around this table. I need one of you snow bunnies around this table. I need one of you bunnies to explain to me how the blame got passed to my son. How is it he's the problem he can't read when according to the school district in the state, you're the problem he can't read. You're the reason he can't see. See, this is how you got to go in there. You got to get bucked with these people. You got to get cranked with these people. You got to let them know that that slave plantation factory they got, that school to prison pipeline they got, that school to prison pipeline your son is not getting on the school to prison pipeline. And then another question you're going to hit him with. Another question you're going to hit him with. Another question you're going to hit him with. Can you please tell me how much Title I money was used to help my son improve his reading and math skills? Just another question. Just another question. How much of your Title I funds was used to help my son improve his reading and math skills? Boom! See, let me say this. Let me smell some of my oils. I love oils. This is the oil I wore in Las Vegas for my picture session with the Queens. Mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think I'm going to wear this one in Newark for the Queens on Saturday. Patterson Queens. Patterson Queens. I'm wearing this scent to hug up and take pictures with my Patterson Queens. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Woof. Patterson Queens. What I'm going to wear for my Newark Queens on Sunday. What I'm going to wear for my Newark Queens. I'm going to wear this one for my Newark Queens. Mmm. Newark, New Jersey, Queens. Y'all gonna love this scent when we take our pictures on Sunday. What I'm aware for my Lansing, Michigan, Queens. My Lansing, Michigan. First time in town. I gotta wear something special for Lansing. This is my first time ever in the childhood home of Malcolm X. I gotta wear something special for my Lansing, Michigan, Queens. For my Lansing, Michigan, Queens. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna save this for my Lansing, Michigan, picture and book signing session for the queendom. But I digress. Let us stay focused. It is always consciousness first. It is always institutions first. It is always revolutions first. Let us stay focused, brothers. Now, woo, mm-mm-mm, okay. How much of your Title I money did you use to improve my son's reading and math scores? Okay. But if you move forward with the evaluation, if you move forward with the evaluation, you could pick the evaluation apart too. You got to ask a real big question. We already knew my son was behind before you tested him. We already knew my son was behind before you tested him. We already knew my son was behind before you tested him. So these scores are no surprise. These scores are no surprise. My question is, how did you determine that his reading deficiencies were due to a disability 
and not inferior instruction. Pow! I'm going to give it to you again. I'm going to give it to you again. These scores are not a surprise. We already knew my son was behind. The question is, how did you decide that my son's reading deficiency was due to a reading disability rather than poor instruction? How did you decide my son's math disability, excuse me, math deficiency? How did you decide my son's math deficiency was caused by a math disability rather than poor instruction in the classroom? After all, your school is on the list of the worst performing schools in the state of Alabama, state of Mississippi, state of Arkansas, state of Washington, state of Oregon, state of Kentucky, state of Missouri. How can you explain? How did you decide? Did you give my son an x-ray? Did you give my son a CAT scan? Did you give my son a urine sample? What did you do with my son? An ultrasound? How did you decide, Mr. School Psychologist, how did you decide my son has a reading disability when the truth is this could be due to poor instruction? I am the leader of the black parent academic revolution. I am the leader of the black parent public school revolution. I am the leader of the black parent charter school revolution. I am the leader of the black parent private school revolution. I am the leader of the black parent Catholic school revolution because of me. Public school will never be the same again. Because of me, special ed will never be the same again. Because of me, you will never look at ADHD the same again. Because of me, you will never look at psychiatric medication the same again. Negroes out here talking about what work he do. What work I do. I kept a whole generation of black boys out of jail, out of special ed, off meds. Hell you mean what I do. You can't find another psychologist, black or white, who's done what I've done these 20 years for the black community. You can't find another psychologist, black or white, who has ever, ever done what I've done these 25 years for the black community. Let's continue. So now they want you to sign the evaluation report. Okay. Learning disabled. Okay. LD. Okay. E D O K reading disability R D M D O K and then you went from the child study intervention team evaluation team now the IEP team We almost done brothers and sisters I'm gonna have you in bed by 12:30 a.m. so my sisters can get their beauty sleep Lord have mercy so I got some pajamas coming out. I got some Dr. Popper Germaniac pajamas for the queens coming out. I got some Dr. Popper Germaniac pajamas for the Ifa Tunde Germaniac queens. But let us stay focused. IEP team. What is the responsibility of the IEP team? The IEP team got three responsibilities. The IEP team is going to determine the special ed learning program. The special ed learning program. 
The first job of the IEP team is to design the special ed learning program. The first responsibility of the IEP team is to design the special ed learning program. What is your child going to learn while they are away from the regular class with the learning support teacher? What are they going to learn and how are they going to learn it? The IEP is the curriculum. The IEP is the curriculum. The IEP is the curriculum for the disabled child in the disabled area. The IEP is the curriculum for the disabled child in the disabled skill area. So number one, program. Number two, placement. Where is your child going to receive their special ed? Where is your child going to receive your special ed? Where is your child going to receive their special ed? Now, let me tell you in the third thing, progress. Progress. The third responsibility of the IEP team is to monitor your child's progress. In other words, the IEP team is taxed with the responsibility of making sure special ed matters to your child. The IEP team is tasked with making sure special ed matters to your child. Special lead must benefit your child. So if the IEP team is responsible for making sure special ed benefits our children, why are so many black kids graduating from special ed who can't read, write, or count? If the IEP team is to make sure special ed matters, why do we have so many black kids in 12th grade in special ed can't read, write, or count. If the IEP team is supposed to make sure special ed is working, make sure special ed is working, why do we have so many children in special ed who can't read, write, or count? Because nobody on that team, nobody on the IEP team gives a damn about your child. That's why. Let me say it again. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Nobody on the IEP team gave a damn about your child. Remember all that? We love Andre, Mr. Raekwon. I love your son. I love him like my own. He reminds me of Robbie. All that shit. Once you sign your son away with the IEP, all that fake Karen energy, all that fake ass crying Karen, that crying Karen shit that get all you black parents all bubbly. The crying Karen. There's always a crying Karen at the IEP table. There's always a crying Karen at the child study team table. There's always a crying Karen at the intervention table. There's always a crying Karen somewhere. And they start crying. The crying Karen. And once you see a crying Karen, you silly ass Negroes, go and sign your kid life for it. If I'm lying, I'm dying. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I do this for our children and I do this for our single mothers out there doing the best they can to take care of these kids. Leave the single mamas alone. Some of them need a kick in the ass, yeah. Some of the single mamas need a kick in the ass. I would agree. Some of the single mamas need a kick in the ass, but most of the single mamas is doing a damn good job from what I can see. I said most of our black, beautiful black single mothers is doing a damn good job from what I can see.
Leave the single mamas alone. Support the single mamas or leave them alone. If you ain't got nothing good to say, if you ain't got nothing good to say about a mother raising multiple kids with no father, if you ain't got nothing good to say about a woman raising multiple kids with no father, keep your beta male mouth shut. Help them or get the hell out the way. Help them or get the hell out the way. Help them or get the hell out the way. I, I promise you this. Won't be no crying Karens at FDMG. I promise you this. Won't be no fake ass IEP teams at FDMG. I promise you this. Won't be nobody trying to feed you no reading disability at FDMG. Oh, the academic revolution is coming. Oh, it's going to come. Oh, yes, brothers and sisters, the windows are out. Oh, yes, the intervention is going to come. But let me stay focused right now. Did you know that IEP that they gave you belonged to another kid? Did you know that IEP that they gave you if you need to reach me for consultation, 215-989-9858. I do not answer the phone. Text me. 215-989-9858. Text me. I do not answer the phone. 215-989-9858. Text me. I do not answer the phone. Email D-R-U-M-A-R Johnson. Email D-R-U-M-A-R J-O-H-N-S-O-N at Yahoo.com. Instagram, I get too many Instagram inboxes. I can't check them all. I get thousands per day. My page reaches about 2 million people a month. I got a gazillion inboxes. I might not see your message until next year. If I were you, Forget an Instagram inbox. Forget all that social media shit. We talking about saving kids. You need to send me an email or a text message because waiting on me to read an Instagram inbox. Okay. Most of the queens who slide into my DMs ain't looking for no special ed support. They looking for King Kong. Okay. So if you need support with your kids, send a text or an email because the queens on Instagram, they not sliding into them boxes for that. They got a whole nother agenda. OK, they want King Kong delicious. They not coming for the consciousness. They coming for the King Kong. But I digress. But I digress. But I digress. That IEP they gave you for your child. That IEP they gave you for your child. That I, King Kongalicious Undies coming for the Queens. That IEP they gave you for that child was another kid's. They took another child's IEP. They took another child's IEP. They took another child's IEP. Change the name, change the birth date, change the home address, change the pupil ID number, and put your child name on it. I'm telling you what I know. Listen to me, black parents. You are out of your heavenly minds. You are out of your heavenly minds. You are out of your heavenly mind if you think these people care enough about your child to sit down with a fresh IEP, brand new IEP, 30 pages. And you think they're going to fill out 30 pages. What should we teach Andre for math? What will be the strategies? What will be the lessons? What will be, oh, uh, what about, what supports does he need? What about math? Uh, uh, let's reflect on these strategies and make sure... You really think, you really think these snow bunnies are going to sit down with a fresh IEP and do a fresh IEP for Andre. That will take them at least an hour and a half to two hours. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. They're going to get on the computer. They're going to say, what grade is he in? And what is his disability? 
reading comprehension, fourth grade. Let me go find somebody. Reading comprehension, fourth grade. Let me go find somebody. Here goes somebody named Wasim. This is Wasim. Let me pull up Wasim IEP, change the name, the birth date, parent name, address, pupil number, print it out. You signed your child up for that shit. You signed your child up for that shit. Your child is in special ed in an underfunded, understaffed, unconcerned school. And you really think they're going to give him some individual attention just because it says individual education program? You really think that your child is going to get some extra help? Are you out of your freaking minds? Sister Erica, cut it out with the center buns. Get professional. We live. Sister Erica trying to throw me center buns on the live. I'm teaching for the kids. Stay focused, queen. So. I need you all to understand special ed is a scam. And then they get money for scamming your kid. And then what nobody never tells you. But nobody never tells you. Is your child's report card grades are going to go straight to A's and B's. How did your child's report card grades go straight to A's and B's? How did your son go from almost failing to almost honor roll in one marking period? How did your son go from almost failing to almost honor roll in one marking period? How did your daughter go from almost failing to almost honor roll in one marking period? You know how? Special ed kids are not graded based on achievement. Let me say it. All the other kids are graded based on state standards for their grade. Third grade standard, fourth grade standard. Your special ed kids aren't graded based on no damn standard. They're graded based on progress towards the IEP goals. I'm going to say it again. Your special ed kid is being graded based on progress towards IEP goal. So your son is in the fourth grade reading on the first grade, but he started special ed on kindergarten. Because he's up to the first grade, even though he's still four grades behind, he will get an A on his report card. And nobody's going to tell his mama Nobody's going to tell his mama. Nobody's going to tell his mama. Please don't get too excited, Miss Shaquita. Your son's grades are not based on achievement. They're based on effort. He's still just as behind now as he was before. So why does he have all A's and B's? Because he's in special ed now. We don't put the pressure on him that we put on other kids. That wouldn't be fair to Andre because Andre has a disability. We don't want to put pressure on him like that. You know what they really doing? They don't want to put pressure on themselves to teach Andre. They don't want to put pressure on themselves to teach Andre. They don't want to put pressure on themselves to teach Andre. What a shame. I'm the first black psychologist to expose this in American history.
I'm the first black psychologist to expose this in American history. I'm the first black psychologist to expose this in American history. Now, if your child has an IEP, which means they're in special ed, whether they're still in the regular class or not, I need you parents to get this. Whether your child is still in the regular class or not, if they have an IEP, they are special ed, the school is getting paid. There's no such thing as he got an IEP, but he not in special ed. He is a special ed student in the computer if he has an IEP, even if he stays in the regular class. But you know what I don't understand about us? Why don't we just get our child a tutor? Why do we put our kids through this shit? Why do we put them through this child study team, intervention team, evaluation team, IEP team? Why do we do this? Just get them a tutor. Just get them a tutor. You mean to tell me you can't find a retired teacher? In your community, all these black churches, you can't find a retired teacher. You better go to church on Sunday to find a retired teacher to work with your daughter. You better go to church until you find your retired teacher who can work with your child. Find you a college student who can work with your child. Find you a high school student who can work with your child. But you better stay away from these academic exploitation tutoring programs. Y'all know their names. They all in the black community, scaring parents, making you think you got to spend $15,000 to get your son up to grade level. You got to spend $25,000 to get your daughter up to grade. Y'all better leave that crap alone. They are financially robbing you. They are robbing you. Any tutoring center that tells you you got to take out a second mortgage on your house to teach your kid how to read is running a scam on you. That's a scam burglar. That's a scam burglar. I tell you what, if you paying somebody $20,000 to teach your kids how to read, give me the money. Donate it to FDMG. I have your kid reading in one weekend. Donate it to FDMG and I will have your kid reading in one weekend. Don't you dare give no damn non-Africans no fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for no reading and math program. You are out of your mind if you don't get you a high school kid, college kid, or retired teacher. But you know what black folks' problem is. We got the same problem with school, educating our kids that we have with everybody else. We don't want to pay for nothing we need. Can I say it again? Black people don't want to pay for nothing we need. Can I say it one more time? Black people don't want to pay for nothing we need. Anything we need, the government's supposed to do it. Our money is for our wants, even when it comes to our kids. Even when it comes to our kids. I know black parents who make over $100,000 a year. I know black parents who make over $100,000 a year. And they got their kids in special ed and they're driving a Mercedes. Can somebody help me understand this right here? I need some help now. I need some help. I need somebody to help me understand how you driving a Mercedes Benz and your child is on special. How about you trade in the Mercedes for a nice little $30,000 SUV? How about you trade in the Mercedes for a nice little 30 grand SUV and use the rest of that money to pay a tutor to help your child? Look at that. Look at that. 
You driving a $120,000 car and your child can't read. Black man. I'm about to put black men on the spot. Brothers, I'm going to put y'all on the spot. I'm putting every black man with a black son in special ed who's not autistic, deaf, blind, speech, orthopedically impaired, brain injured, health impaired. If you are a black man in America and your son is in special ed for reading, math, emotional, ADHD, if you are a black man in America and your son is in special ed for reading, math, behavior, well, emotional disturbance, because you can't put a kid in special ed for behavior. I'm going to come to that next. If you are a black man in America and your son is in special ed for reading, math, comprehension, listening, emotional disturbance, ADHD, conduct disorder, ODD, and you driving an expensive truck, you got Jordans and Thames and expensive sunglasses and all that shit, you are a disgrace to your race. And I'm going to tell you why. If you got that kind of money, if you got that kind of money, if you can drive, what's the new trucks out? Hummer trucks and Benz trucks and the, you got the Gervonta Tank Davis truck. Shout out to Tank. Good luck. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you, Tank. My Baltimore Africans, let Tank know Dr. Umar is a supporter. No snow bunnies, though, Tank. I will drop your ass like a bad habit. Tank, I'm a Tank fan. Gervonta Tank Davis, Dr. Umar roots for you. Your Philly brother is rooting for my Baltimore brother. But Tank, no snow bunnies. If I catch your ass dating a bunny, I'm going to drop you as quick as you drop Ryan Garcia. No bunnies for Tank. I'm rooting for you, brother. Go get him. Let me get back. Let me get back. Let me get back. Let me get back. Now, if you are a black man driving a luxury vehicle, luxury clothing, luxury home, luxury... And your son got an IEP because he can't read, count, write, sit still? You are the worst piece of filth in the black community. If you got money for cars, you got money for reading tutoring. You got money for cars, you got money for math tutoring. You got money for cars, you got money for comprehension tutoring. You got money for cars, you got money for all the academic support that your child needs. There's nothing worse than a child who can't read or write and the father walking to the school looking like a million dollar billboard. You walking around looking like a million dollar billboard and you got a son in special ed. Lord have mercy. 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 Listen to me, parents. I'm about to close this out, but I need to say a few things. First of all, was this helpful? Ladies, I need some hearts if it was helpful. Fellas, give me some fists. Alpha males, black fathers, did you learn anything tonight? Black mothers, did you learn anything tonight? I need hearts from the queens, fists from the kings. Did you learn anything tonight? Listen to me, parents. A child cannot go to special education for behavior. Let me say it again. You cannot put a child in special ed for behavior problems. Let me say it again. It is illegal to put a child in special education for behavior problems. Did y'all hear what I said? He could have ADHD. He could have conduct disorder. He could have ODD. Now, those are behavior, right? But guess what? He cannot qualify. You cannot qualify for special ed unless the disability affects your learning. I hope every black mother and father is listening to what I am saying right now. A disability alone does not earn you special ed.
A disability alone does not own earn you special ed. A disability alone does not earn you special ed. The disability must affect learning. The disability must affect learning. The disability must affect learning. The ADHD must affect learning. We know ADHD don't exist, but the so-called ADHD must affect learning. Conduct disorder must affect learning. Autism must affect learning. Hearing impairment must affect learning. If the disability does not affect learning, special ed cannot enter the conversation. If the disability doesn't affect learning, special ed cannot enter the conversation. If your son's grades, if your son got an A and B student, if your kid is A, B, or B, C with no signs of failure in sight, if your child is A, B student or B, C student with no signs of failure in sight, if your child is an A, B student or B, C student with no signs of failure in sight, Why would you dare entertain a conversation about special education? Why would you dare entertain a conversation about special education? If your son or daughter has no problem learning in the regular class, why would you entertain a conversation about special ed? I don't care if they're autistic. If the autism doesn't affect their ability to learn in the regular class, why are you talking special ed? If the ADHD isn't affecting their ability to learn in the regular class, why are you talking special ed? Special ed is only for disabled kids whose disability affects learning in the class. If your disability doesn't affect learning, you cannot qualify. There must be an adverse effect on educational performance. The exact words from the law is adverse effect on educational performance. I'm going to thank all my donors. Please hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school, dollar sign FDMG school. Please hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy, paypal.me. So with that being said, I still need some sisters to volunteer for secretary spots. I need some black women who's responsible. I need some secretaries. We got to start organizing our people. I need some black women. Who can help us out? Help us out. If you want to be one of my secretaries for Team Pan African, shoot me a text. Let me know. Your hair need to be natural, though. Your hair need to be natural. Your hair need to be natural. God bless you. I love you. Peace and Pan Africanism. Thank you.